good morning class welcome to your physics class hope you enjoyed your holidays and you are keeping safe at home so let us start chapter 4 that is light you have already studied about light in your physics class right so what are the basic things that you have studied in your previous class let us first revise it see first and foremost thing that you study that was light travels in a straight line right if you remember you have studied this rectilinear propagation of light that is light always travels in a straight line okay then it can also travel through vacuum okay light does not require any medium to travel it can always travel through vacuum then the speed of light is maximum in vacuum and its value is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second right and nothing can travel faster than light okay light has got the maximum value the maximum velocity and uh, no body can travel faster than light right so these are the things you have already studied in class 6 okay in this chapter we will study how we can see things and why do objects appear of a particular color right so let us first see how we can see things okay how do we see things so whenever the light that is emitted or reflected by any object that reaches our eyes we can see that object okay so here i am using two words emitted and reflected what do these words mean so emitted a body if it is emitting an uh, light that means it is having light of its own or it is producing it and that it is sending to our eyes right and reflected that means light is falling by any source on that object from any source light is coming and it is falling on that object and it is being reflected from it and if it reaches our eyes then we will be able to see that object right so see i have made a diagram over here suppose this is a uh, any object right this is any object and these are the light rays see these these three rays can you see these these i have made these are the light rays falling on this object now what will happen some part of the light rays which were falling on it some part of it will be absorbed by the object itself while some part will be transmitted through it right and some part of it will be reflected back can you see some part it is reflected back so three things are happening first some will some part of the light will be absorbed by the object then some will be transmitted through the object while some part will be reflected okay so from some object maximum light transmits through it that means it just passes through it maximum light will pass through it and very small part will be reflected back those kind of objects are known as transparent objects right have you seen transparent thing suppose you have a glass sheet through which you can just uh, see through right so that means most of the light passes through it but what a, what about any other thing like say this is a pen or this copy you can see this this is not transparent no? this notebook is not transparent that means light is falling for the from the tube light to the bulb on this notebook and the light that is reflected from it that is reaching my eyes and that is why i am able to see this okay and the absorption thing this will be studying in some other chapter so let us leave it for now so mainly in this chapter 
we have to study about the reflection okay because the uh, some part that is reflected that is making us able to see that object so we will be studying about reflection so reflection is of two types you can see regular reflection and diffuse reflection okay so the reflection that is taking place from a smooth surface smooth surface that will be known as regular reflection and the reflection that is taking place from rough surface that will be known as diffuse reflection so here you can write a rough surface or uneven surface okay so that will be known as diffuse reflection and so now see the diagram over here this is a smooth surface ab hmm? so see i have made three light rays falling on this smooth surface okay and what is the uh, important thing about these light rays these three are parallel to each other okay so what will happen in case of regular reflection even after the reflection the reflected ray will also be parallel to each other can you see these are the reflected light light rays and they are also parallel to each other okay so because the light rays after reflection are parallel to each other that is why we can see the image of the object on smooth surfaces okay for example suppose you have a mirror the mirror is very smooth very highly smooth okay so that gives a very clear image of yours right but uh, say something very polished like uh, say you have a steel plate just newly bought steel plate can you see your face over there yes you can maybe a little uh, blur or not that much clear as in the mirror but still you can see your face over there right that means that is also smooth but because maybe some unevenness or some roughness the image is not that clear okay so the clarity of the image will show how smooth the surface is right so now see this this is a rough surface okay this one is a rough surface now see parallel light ray was fall light rays were falling on it but after reflection what happened all of them are going in different directions okay so that won't make a perfect image and no one will be able to see any image from the surface right so this is reflection from smooth surface and rough surfaces these diagrams are made in your book also you can also see from there then the next thing the terms related to reflection so before we proceed to a proper reflection process and all the image formation etc you need to know several terms and you have to be familiar with those so first thing is ray what is a ray light like i was saying here also that the light rays are coming a ray is a small or narrow stream of light which is representing the path of light okay so the ray what is the ray it is a narrow stream of light okay that means narrow part of light and basically it is showing the path of light right so see if i talk about this ray this is telling you about about a small part of light that is going along this path right so this is a ray even this one this is also showing you the path so how are we representing a ray we are just drawing a line and an arrow showing the direction of the light ray right then silvering what is silvering have you seen the mirror any mirror from its back just turn it over and you will see that it is some uh, layer of aluminum or silver is over there on their back 
egg so that layer is known as silvering okay and that layer is very important because only that is responsible for reflection okay so that layer is called silvering and how do we represent silvering suppose we have to draw a mirror what do we do we just draw a line and then make these kind of line small lines like this okay so these lines these are not called lines these are called hatching right these are called hatching and what does hatching represent hatching represents silvering okay so if i simply draw a line like this that means this is a glass sheet this is not having any um, silvering on the back so it won't work like a mirror okay to sim a simple transparent glass sheet okay then incident ray so here you had seen over here see the light ray coming towards the surface this these were coming towards the surface so these were the incident rays and these were going away from the surface that means these were the reflected rays so two things we have done the incident ray and the reflected ray then point of incidence now see this figure this is a surface reflecting surface i have made hatching over it that means this is working as a mirror and then <clears throat> this is the light ray coming towards the surface so this is the incident ray i have denoted it with i and the point at which it touches the reflecting surface that i have denoted by p and this p is the point of incidence the point at which the incident ray is touching the reflecting surface and then pr i have shown you the reflected light ray okay now if i draw a perpendicular on this reflecting surface this is the reflecting surface i have made a perpendicular on it this perpendicular will be called as the normal right and the angle between the incident ray and the normal see this angle it this is the angle between the incident ray and the normal that is why it is denoted by i small i and is known as the angle of incidence right and the angle between the reflected ray and the normal is called angle of reflection and is represented by r okay so these are the terms you need to remember always whenever maybe in next one we'll be studying the image formation from plane mirror then you must be knowing all these terms there i won't be telling you again and again what is an incident ray or what is a reflected ray you must be knowing all these terms before the next lecture okay so take this as a homework this question this is the uh, first question of your short answer type questions so distinguish between regular and diffuse reflection just try doing this answer maybe you can write in your rough copy or you can just find out in the book and we will discuss it in the next lecture then you can write in your fair copy okay so that's all for today just go through this uh, this part whatever we have studied today just go through from your book and make sure you know these terms now okay that's all for today children bye bye